our rational expressions, we've done multiplying, we've done dividing, we've done reducing, but really it's just factoring, 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 and more factoring. So you're really good at this because you've been doing this for a long time now. Well, now we're going to move into adding and subtracting. So the title of today's lesson is Adding or Subtracting Rational Expressions. And we're going to start with something that we already know. We're going to start with just plain old fractions with good old fashioned numbers, no variables or anything to confuse us. Because the rules that apply here are the same rules that apply when we add in x's and all those fun expressions. So we're going to start with 3x, or sorry, 3 over 4 plus 5 over 4. Now what we're really asking here is we're counting how many fourths there are. So we have 3 fourths, we're going to add 5 more fourths, so we can now say, well, gee, all together, there are 8 fourths. You're like, yeah, I remember that stuff, right? Okay, now, we didn't change the denominator. We were counting how many fourths there were. We just added the numerators together because the denominators were the same. They were already the same size. They were fourths. Okay, then we look at this and we say, well, are we done? No, we can still reduce that. 8 divided by 4 is 2. All right, so the same rules apply when we start throwing in rational expressions. Okay, so if the denominators are the same, then you just add or subtract the numerators, the tops. All right, now you see this little star here. This is to remind us that we did not add or subtract the denominators. That was our common denominator. That was the size of our pieces. That doesn't change, okay? So do not add or subtract your denominators. Okay? It stays the same. Alright, so the reason why I bring this up is because when we start throwing in x's, suddenly we want to do things because they look good, but it's not the same rules. Alright, so let's look at the steps. Alright, the steps for doing this are first, do not factor the numerators. I know I said this whole chapter, factor, 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 but this is the one time we are not going to touch the numerators, okay? What we're looking at first is the denominators, okay? So leave the numerators alone, and we're looking to see if the denominators are the same. And hey, miracle of miracle, they are for this first half of class. Why? Because I created them that way, right? This is what we're going to practice. So if the denominators are the same, which they will be, then we're just going to add or subtract the numerators together. We're going to combine the like terms, right? X's with X's, numbers with numbers, X squares with X squares, no pink underwears, which means if you're saying X plus 7, then you just put it together and it is X plus 7, right? We can't combine those. All right, then we're exactly where we were before, before we started this section. We will have one fraction. We have a denominator, we've added our numerators together, and now we're going to see if we can factor and reduce anything and rewrite our leftovers, okay? I know I went fast, so you can pause here. Go ahead and copy down the notes to make sure you have them, and then we'll do some examples. with 5m over 2m plus 7m minus 2 over 2m. And you're like, oh wait, Mrs. Woolley, suddenly we got some m's in there. I don't know what to do. It's okay. You're just looking at the numerators. Are they the same? Sorry, denominators. Denominators, sorry. Looking at the denominators, the bottoms. Are they the same? Yes, they are. All right, that means that our common denominator is 2m, right? doesn't change. We don't add the 2m's together. We're counting how many 2m's we have. All right, so we're going to add the numerators together. So we have 5m plus 7m minus 2. All right, now we're looking, is there anything that's a like term? Is there anything common we can put together? And we say, well, yes, we can. We can add these m's. All right, so now I have 12m minus 2 divided by 2m. 
I done? Well, I want to be done. But remember, we got to check to see if we can factor anything. That means we cannot cancel out this 2 and this 2 together. Yes, they're top and bottom, but this has a subtraction sign. They are glued together. That means you cannot take away any little piece. It's all or nothing, okay? So that means I'm looking to see, can I factor? And so I'm looking first here, do I have a common factor? I do, I do. So I can take out a 2, and my leftovers will be 6m minus 1. See, 2 times 6 is 12, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, all over 2m. Okay, at this point, I can now reduce this 2 and this 2. And you're like, well, wait, you told me I couldn't over here because it was attached. Here, it's being multiplied. There is no plus or minus sign attaching it to another number after it. So now it's free game. We can cross those out. So what I'm left with now is going to be 6m minus 1 over m. Now, usually I like to put parentheses around these here. It's not wrong if you don't, but it's to remind me that these guys are glued together, and that means I cannot cancel those m's, right? So that means this is my answer, and I'm done. All right, let's do another one of these. All right. Look at the denominators first. Are they the same? Miracle of miracles, they are. All right, so our common denominator is 3x. And now we're just going to add the numerators. So we have 4x plus 2x minus 6. And then I can see, oh yes, I can put these x's together. So I have 6x minus 6 all over 3x. Can I cancel out this 3 and one of the 6's? No, I cannot, because this is glued together. This now is a single fraction, just like we knew before. This is where we factor, 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 and cross stuff off. So the common factor here is 6, and we're left with x minus 1 over 3x. Now we are no longer attached. We're a free agent, so now we can cross out this 6 and 3. We're left with 2 and 1, and our answer is going to be 2 parentheses x minus 1 over x. Now, some of you are not putting your parentheses here. Is that the same expression? Is 2x minus 1 the same as 2 parentheses x minus 1? It's not. Okay, so make sure you leave your parentheses in there. And a reminder, you cannot cancel out those x's because this one is attached. All right, last example. I promise. Now we're almost done. The last example is subtraction. And you say, well, Mrs. Woolley, how is that any different? Well, there's a little trick, so let me show you. All right, so first we look at the denominators. Are they the same? Yes, they are. So our denominator is x minus 5. Now, this time we are subtracting. What are we subtracting? Well, we're subtracting everything in the second fraction. That means we're subtracting x, and we're subtracting 1. So what that means is, is that we are really distributing that negative sign, and we're changing all the signs of everything in that second fraction. So what we have then is 3x minus 9 minus x minus 1. All right, now we're going to look at our common terms that we can put together. Make sure you're being careful here now. What's in front of the number stays with the number. It's like Vegas, baby. So we have a 3x and a negative x. And how many x's are there? Oh yeah, there's one x there. So 3x minus 1x, and we're subtracting now, so this is just going to be 2x. And then we have a negative 5 and a negative 1, those combine together to give you a negative 10, all over x minus 5. Okay, cool. Now we're just back to where we were. We're just going to reduce this fraction, and we're going to do that by factoring. So we're looking first, can we factor this? No. It's already a single term, right? There's no x squared, there's no GCF, we're done. So can we factor this? Yes, we can. There's a GCF, we look for that first. So we take out the 2, and our leftovers would be x minus 5, all over x minus 5. And then, hey, check this out. We have something to cancel. 
Will you always have something to cancel? No, sometimes you're just dumb. You won't be able to factor or there's nothing to cross out. But this time there is, so we cross this out and we're left with two. Now this is actually a pretty cool problem because here's what it means. No matter what number I put in here for x, it will always reduce down to two. If I said x was five, and I put a five here, 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 and here. Well, actually five's a bad number, let's change that, six. I put a six here, 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 and here. And now I have numbers, and I plugged them in and figured out, and added them all together, it would reduce to two. If I put in 100, same thing, plug in a 100 here, 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 and here, plug it in, you get two. In fact, no matter what number you're going to put in, except for your excluded values, you will end up with two every time. Pretty cool. And that's why we manipulate these things to get it down to something simple so we can avoid having to plug in numbers with a complicated equation. All right, guys, that's it. Um, we're now going to do an activity in class. We're going to do the tic-tac-toe. If you're watching this because you are absent, then we did the Sir Flunkalot worksheet. It comes exactly, the, the questions that I did for the tic-tac-toe come from the Sir Flunkalot um, worksheet. So just pick any five in there, show me your work and your correct answers, and you can get credit. It's attached on School Loop, and, uh, and that's all we have. Pretty easy, right? All right, guys, get to it, and remember, you know you love math.